teaching you how to play the basics of piano. Yeah, so this video is for someone that is an absolute beginner at piano. They have no idea anything about piano, about music, but they've always, you know, been interested. Maybe you've been interested in learning how to play piano, or you just like music and you wish you could play music yourself, or maybe you're trying, you're getting older and you're looking for a new hobby to pick up, or maybe even uh, you just want to use it for the like brain benefits. Because I mean. Learning how to play piano actually is proven to make you smarter because it actually improves neurological connections in the brain and develops it and works it out in many different ways and prevents uh, like later on brain disorders like dementia and whatnot and uh, Alzheimer's and stuff like that and it basically just tunes everything up. Kind of like a piano is in tune. So let's tune your brain up. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to be showing the basics, and it's sort of an ongoing lesson series, which will I'll start really, really basic. So even if you have known a little bit about piano before, but you just don't have any clue for later stuff, um, just use this as a review. A couple of few lessons will probably be most people know, but if you don't, that's fine. This is what this is for. It's for the absolute beginner. If you have never taken piano in your life and you just want to learn, and then eventually it's going to go on and on and on, and it'll show you things uh, that you probably don't. All right, so let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to cover is fingers, your finger numbers. Ooh. <laughs> so your fingers actually have uh, numbers or names so that we can know which finger we need to play on the piano by writing it on the sheet music. Later on in later lessons, I'll teach you guys how to read sheet music and stuff like that. So, uh, but for now, let's just leave that. That's what we use it for, is to tell our finger, be able to communicate which finger we want on which. Instead of going like, oh, well, um, that finger on your right hand goes there. It would be too big. So how it goes, it's pretty simple. Just look at your fingers like this or like that, whatever. And all you do is your thumbs are gonna be called one. Pointing fingers are two, three, four, five, just outward. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Pretty easy, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Just one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. So both thumbs are one, two, three, four, five. Um, uh, one thing is if you're playing scales, uh, you want to be thinking from left to right kind of a motion with both hands. So the left side now you notice, look, the left side of my left hand is my fifth finger and the left side of my right hand is my first finger. So don't let the numbers confuse you, okay? It's think left to right some uh, when you're playing scale pa passages together. Okay, so that's finger numbers. The next thing we're gonna do is look at uh, the notes on the piano. All right, so here we are at the piano. So we're first gonna learn uh, all the names of these keys. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, Andrew, there's a lot of keys here. Are you sure we're going to have time to learn all the names of them? <laughs> yes, we are, actually. Because there's actually only seven names for all these keys. So, what would the names be based off of? Well, it's actually the English alphabet. So, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's it. So, there are actually 88 keys in this whole piano. So, somehow, seven letters can't really, you know, seven, 88, uh, there's something wrong here. Unless they just repeat, don't they? So, this actually repeats from here to here. So, on a standard piano, like a full size standard piano, like a grand piano like this, or a full standard regular piano, there's 88 keys. Other keyboards have different amounts of keys, but this one just has 88, okay? All right, so at the very bottom of an 88 key keyboard is an A. So it starts with the first letter, with the first note, because this is actually the first note, because it goes this way in piano. It's always going from left to right, just like when you read. So this is the bottom, and that's the top. So the bottom note is A, and it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So if you ever get lost, that's all you do. You just go down to the bottom of your piano and you go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then you find whichever note that you're looking for and do that. Okay, so that's the bottom of the keyboard. Now up at the top, 
the top note is actually a C. Now, how do I know that? Well, I know that because of the black keys. The black keys, there's two of them and then three of them. Three, two, three, two. And they're all throughout the piano. And what do they do? They actually tell me where I am at the piano. Because these black keys could have easily just been made into white keys and then pushed into the spaces in between, right? The whole point of these is to actually um, be able to determine where you are playing. Because imagine if someone's just like, okay, well, I'll play the... Uh, the 71th key up here, the 70, not 71th, 71st, <laughs> 71st key, and then like the 29th and the 38th together or something like that. How would you really know, right? Because there'd be no way to count that this is A or C or whatever unless you have these because that actually shows the shape of the key and it gives you an idea of where you are. So that's actually how you find the key you're looking for when you're playing on the piano. Now this is the easy way, like the fail-safe way is just to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then I have a couple tricks for learning how to memorize those keys. So to find a C, which is the most important key, basically, well it's not really the most important, but it's the most centrally used. Um, so there's the C up at the top, the A at the bottom, now in the middle we have what's called middle C. And that's middle C right there. All we do is we look for two black keys, and then to the left of that. And that's C. Now, if we're going to find A, so A would be you find three black keys, and then go to the middle one of the three, and then go to the right. So three, middle, right. Now we go somewhere else. Three, middle, right. That's an A. These are all A's. Those are all A's. Okay, so A starts there. If you ever want to find, you know, you want to just count up the letter of the alphabet, you just go find those three black keys and go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's how that works. Now, uh, there's other ways to memorize them, because eventually you want to uh, make it so that you can just look at a key and know its note name. So I've done that with people in my lessons, like, the first lesson, they know all the keys on the piano and they can hit the keys. So it is possible to learn it very quickly if you just want to. The biggest part of piano, just like anything else, is the amount of determination you have to learn it. So it's mainly up to you and how much you practice. And then the information I give you, you can use as tools to speed up your progress. Okay, so this is C. And that's A. So A is to the right of the middle black key and C is to the left of the two black keys. Now, we have another one called F, so we go three black keys to the left. So look at this. C and F look very similar, don't they? They almost look like copies of each other. If, if you only had two black keys here and two black keys here, they'd look identical. So what we actually have to do is we have to see the difference between this is two black keys and that's three. So people can get those two confused. So that's why I try to teach them at the same time to explain the differences so that they don't get confused. So C has two black keys and F has three. That's the only difference because they look exactly the same. Okay. Now the other two lookalikes are the E key and the B key. So E and B. Fun, eh? <laughs> so E has two and B has three. That's basically it. E's got two, B's got three. And that's all you can do. So you go back and forth between those. Try testing yourself like that. Okay, now the next key is D. So D goes right in the middle, or right in between the two black keys. Now the reason uh, D is sort of e actually easier to understand than other ones because, well, remember, not understand. But it's because they're going right between the two black keys right here. So D is sort of like a den. See? Ooh, I'm going to get into the den here. Mm. <laughs> Cozy up and watch some TV with my whatever. If I was that big, right? I could just do -do -do, set up my TV there. I could have like a nice plasma up against the wall there. Although I think LCDs are better now, aren't they? Anyway. <laughs> okay, that's a bit off topic. But yeah, so D is for like a den. So that's D. You just look for two black keys and then go in between. Pretty simple, right? 
and now we knew A was there, so G is just the key to the left of it. So G is to the left of the middle notes. And look at this, they sort of look like mirror images of each other, don't they? Right? If you put a mirror in the middle, it'd be like they're mirror images of each other. So just remember G's on the left and A is on the right. Okay. So those are the keys. All right. So next up here is hand position. So I'm going to show you how to move your hands in the right way and how to play the keys now that you know what all the keys actually are. So they just repeat up and down the keys. And with our fingers, what we actually want to do, uh, we actually want to create kind of semicircles with our hands. And we're going to play with the side part of our thumb like this, right there. And that just plays down into the key. And when we play the key, we need to always make sure that we go right down to the bottom of the key. We don't want to do this, because then no sound actually happens. We have to play right down to the bottom of the key. What makes it louder or softer is how fast we depress the key. If we go, it's loud. If we do it slowly, it's softer. So just think of pushing more weight in to get it louder and then just just letting the arm weight of your hand just do the work for you if you're trying to get a soft sound. Okay? So that's how you press the key. Now, that's with your thumb. Your thumb is actually the most awkward finger you have. Um, probably some of the best ones, the best fingers for playing passages are these ones. Your second and third finger are your strongest two fingers, and then your fourth and fifth are kind of together and they're a little bit weaker. So they take more training. So you're probably going to find it easiest to play with these three fingers because we use them the most. Because how often do we ever like use our fourth and fifth finger to like open up a bottle of milk? <laughs> like never, right? <laughs> so they need a little bit more training to get uh, the neurological connections, you know, created and stronger in those areas. So if you're finding, oh, my fingers aren't listening to me, I just can't play piano, don't worry about it. It'll all come together soon. You just got to practice and I'll be... It'll be fine in no time. Okay, so um, when we play on the piano, we actually need to keep our hand very mediocre. We don't want to do this with our wrist. We don't want any wrist up or wrist down. We just put it in the middle. We don't want to be pushing our hands way up in the air or way down. We don't want to be playing like this. Like this is horrible to play piano like that. That's just a very, very bad posture, and it's not good. So what we want to do is keep our hand kind of level with the floor. So we're not gonna have a dip in the wrist, anything too crazy. But the main thing here is not to get some, a stiff wrist. You don't want something that's stiff. We don't wanna get stiff, we wanna just be relaxed. So it should feel like your hand is like light and feathery. Okay, so keep your hand level with the floor and then your fingers are sort of like bridges or archways. And you're just going to transfer the weight into those fingers. So what you can think of is you can think of a bridge. And there's like green grass on one side and green lovely grass on the other. And then there's like this cobblestone bridge and it's going over these sparkling little streams and everything. Or like a river. And it's going right through the little valley and then there's people on top of the bridge. This would be the bridge, the finger. And they're looking down and then whenever you do this... The bridge breaks and everyone's like, ah, sploosh, 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 and they fall into the river and then alligators eat them up. <laughs> so we don't want to feed the people to the alligators by doing this. Keep it rigid, like nice and strong, only for the time of, that you're actually hitting the note and then relax as soon as you're done. So an exercise to do that is to play loud and then as quickly as you can play quiet. Okay, that'll train you to relax your fingers quicker. Okay, um, so you're gonna push down into the key, sort of with the arm weight that's already in your arm. And I'll get into more detail with that in a later lesson. So keep the fingers curved, never do this. That's very bad. Keep them like that, okay? And we're not gonna over curve them like this, because that's bad as well. You just want let your hand drop and see how my fingers have a natural curve. Then I just let them kind of go onto the piano and they were good. So keep them very relaxed. Okay, now I'm going to teach you how to do a C major scale. 
So C major scale is one of the most basic things you can do. So we're going to start off with a five note finger pattern C major scale. Why is it called five? Because I have five fingers. So we're just going to play five notes. So we start on guess what note for C major scale? C. <laughs> so we find two black notes, put our fifth finger on C. Okay. And then we're going to play four on D and we're just going to go up. Okay, now, we actually want to be able to get to here though. That's a full scale right there. We need to get to the next C. So we start on a C and then we end on a C. So to do that, we actually have to do something called a tuck. So we're going to do the first five notes. And then, as we do this, we're actually going to keep our hand like this and move it over. And our thumb's going to slide underneath. And as you do this, you have to keep your hand flat. So it shouldn't be kind of doing this, like a whole flopping motion, or your arm shouldn't be moving up and down. It's just going to be a very... Okay. All right. Now keep in mind that when I'm doing this, I'm also trying to film at the same time, so... Give me a break if my posture or something is wrong with the fingers. That's how it sh sh should look. So the tuck can be the trickiest part for some people, and they have some problems with it. So what I suggest for an exercise for that is do this. So you're going to play your second finger, then your thumb, and then you're going to move over. So it should be a very very kind of like this kind of emotion not like this it's sort of very horizontal not vertical so horizontal it's like your hand squishes up like an accordion and then smush moves out and in so just like that and then that's how it works so it comes in and then your thumb goes under sort of like it's going into a cave That's a C major scale. It goes from C to C. Okay, so when you're doing it, you should aim for a nice tone, so all the all the notes should sound even. You don't want this. Okay, and also to be steady, so nothing like that's just horrible. So it should be steady. all about the same volume that'll create a nice singing tone like you want to aim listen to your playing while you play because it's very important that you judge how your notes are sounding <laughs> okay so that's that that's a c major scale now we're going to learn twinkle twinkle little okay, star so twinkle twinkle little star has two main themes or sections the first one goes like this. That's the first theme. I'll play it one more time. Okay. Now, it starts on the C with your thumb, and then we're going to move our pinky like that because Otherwise, it gets into this weird crossing finger pattern, and I don't want to do that on the first lesson. Okay, so that's that. Now, the second theme goes like this. So, you just repeat playing each note twice. So, like, G, G, F, F, E, E, D. Now, when I'm actually doing this, I'm not thinking the actual letter names. I'm just thinking down, down, down. Because I'm just going down and up and down and up. So try to think of direction instead of the actual note names. Only think of the note you're starting on and the note you end on. That'll cut down on the amount of work your brain has to do. And it'll simplify everything. Okay, so now that we know those two 
themes, we just do it in this order. We do one, like theme one, theme two, theme two, theme one. So watch this. And then. And then back to theme one again. Just adding in a little extra there for you. Okay, so that is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the lesson there, and I hope you guys learned some things and we'll have some stuff to practice. Um, yeah, so uh, one thing I want to point out before we finish here is um, I know I taught you a song here, but the main purpose of these piano lessons isn't to teach you a whole bunch of songs. Do you know why? Okay, do you, I, people have probably heard this parable or story before. Um, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Uh, teach a man how to fish, and you feed him for a lifetime. So my whole philosophy or goal here with the piano lessons isn't to like feed you fish into your mouth or songs. Like, here's another song for you, and here's another, and, and, rah, 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 and just feeding all these things. Because then what happens is you have to be dependent on me to give you another song. And then that puts you in a system of where I have to teach you the songs and then you can't learn whatever song you want to on your own. Which kind of sucks because then what happens is you want to learn a song and I'm teaching this song. So what happens? You want to learn a song but I'm teaching this one. Because I don't know what songs you want to learn because it could be anything. All, di all people are different. So my whole goal is to teach you how to learn the song yourself. So um, this song, the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star song, is something that I know, like everyone knows, it's familiar, and it's kind of like, yay, I can play a song now. So to start off, I don't see any harm in showing you a couple songs. But uh, as the lessons go on, I, I won't be showing you any more songs, pretty much. It'll just be giving you techniques on how to do different things and more advanced ways so that you can learn the songs that you want to. And because piano basically is just a song is a, is a whole bunch of different techniques and kind of like tools put together or functions. And then you just, if you know all the different functions, like if you know how to do polyrhythms and you know how to do a chord, then you can play that piece if that's all the piece is made up of. So what I do is I give you all the tools and the mechanisms and I teach you how they all work and give you tips on how to do them. Then you practice them and then you can go and you can learn any song that you want to. And then that way you can uh, have fun with music and just enjoy it. And you guys can all learn the songs that you want to and like the whole, the whole world hopefully can expand the music community and uh, more people can enjoy piano and just have fun with music, because music is an international language. You can go anywhere and just play music for people and they'll be like, hmm, that's nice. <laughs> so I'm trying to share that with you guys, because um, there's just something in my heart that just wants people out there, like you who's watching, wants to give you guys a chance to enjoy music, even if you've never had the chance before in your life, because maybe you didn't have a teacher, you didn't have books, or stuff like that. So I'm going to keep going with the lessons I've got. This is actually a retake on all old lessons that I did before over the past two years. So I'm going through the old lessons with the same plan but trying to improve upon them with my new teaching skills and higher quality and better like lighting and <laughs> everything. So hopefully I can match what I did in my previous videos. And uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoy all the videos coming out. So take care, uh, happy practicing, and I look forward to seeing you in my next videos. Bye.